He talked to Prince Gong. Prince Gong then used the, um, the excuse that, you know, I must go and see my older brother in the funeral procession in Rehe. So Prince Gong came from Beijing to Rehe. And eight officials didn't let him to see the, um, the, uh, the two, um, the two em empresses because, again, sister-in-law and, 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 and brother-in-law should not be talking. But then he said, you know, I am just going to meet them for a, for a business meeting. Like, like for, for, it's about the country because I need to report to the head of, heads of state about, the, um, about what went on with the British and the French. You are, you're welcome to come if you want. And then our eight officials like, you know what, uh, do whatever you want. So Prince Gong then had a two-hour meeting, a two to four-hour meeting with Sisi. Absolutely no idea in history, any of the records about what actually happened in that meeting. So what, what sprang, up is, uh, sprang up is a lot of, um, a lot of um, interesting news. Like, for example, um, a lot of people say that, you know, like Prince Gong actually was a lover of Sisi. And that Tong Zhi, like, there's, like his, her son, is actually his son. And that, that's why he helped her. But there's absolutely no historical proof for that kind of thing. So they talked. Prince Gong left back to Beijing. And then there was a guy. And then they used a guy called um, Zhou Zhupei, Zhou Zhupei who, was, um, who was insulted by Shushan earlier. And he got his subordinate, uh, Dong Yuanchun, to actually write a, a document saying that the empresses should have more authority in, um, in, the, uh, in, 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 in the process of making policy. And then during the process, that, that document was then sent back to the empresses. And the empresses uh, thought it was good. But obviously, the eight officials said that you know, this is against the, the, the instruction of the, of the last emperor, of, of, the, of the emperor who, who just died. So they had a, so they wrote a document saying that, you know, giving more power to the empresses is wrong. And so the empresses had a huge fight with the, um, with eight officials because they would not stamp on a document that said that giving more power to empresses is bad. And when they were fighting and they were fighting, they were fighting um, the, the young emperor, the five-year-old, uh, peed himself. And he feed himself, the, every, everything just stopped. Everything stopped. The eight officials then, um, actually, it, it's, they, they went on a strike. They stopped working. So the whole government kind of collapsed uh, in Rehe. And when that happened, the um, Empress Dowager and Empress uh, uh, Sun um, uh, backed down and put the stamp on the document saying that the empresses should not take more power. So that was that. And then so the eight, the eight officials were actually... They, 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 were, they felt that they were very, very much in power. And so that, you know, the arrogance kicks in, the, the arrogance kicks in and everything. And what happened, it was like, eventually they had to go back to Beijing. But the officials were scared going back to Beijing because uh, Beijing was basically Prince Gong's uh, area. It, it's, it's, it's his turf. So when they would go back, he, they knew that they would lose control, but then, you know, since they won such a big war with the Emperor Ping and all that kind of stuff against the, uh, the, this big fight against the Empresses, they thought it was secure, so they left. And when they left, it, did a, they, they, it, was, a, it was a strategic uh, misstep where Xu Shun, the top guy, would take the tomb of the Emperor back, which would take a longer time, and then he had two of his subordinates, uh, actually his older brother and another Zai Yuan, who was the, uh, and another prince, to take the two... Oh, they were weaker, and they take the empresses back, and, and, and emperor. And so that was a really, really bad move, because when they went, so the empresses and the two of the lesser guys of the eight officials went back, these lesser guys were lesser than, than Xu Shun, so he, they, their authority is less, and then they were, they, they were not as smart. And so the empresses, especially Empress Dowager, then linked with Prince Gong and everybody who had, who had the army. The army was actually back, uh, backed Prince Gong, for example, Sun Ge Lin was is actually the um, is actually first cousins with Prince Gong, so it's a lot closer, which goes back to the whole disequilibrium versus equilibrium thing. If a regime is based on the close family of the emperor, 
then if you try to put people in who are not in the close family, the close family will do something to you. And this is exactly what's happening. So when you want to study Chinese history and Chinese modern affairs, you need to understand how the regime was structured, which is where the power lies. And when that power is not given enough power or interest, that power will rise and then disagreement will happen. And this is what, exactly what happened. And so Prince Gong and the empresses colluded. They said that you know, the eight officials are illegit. The, um, the documentation that was written about Xianfeng giving, the, the, the former emperor giving the authority to the eight officials is fake because he didn't write it, he only said it. And so, they, so with the army's support, they arrested the two officials that came with the empresses. And then, and then the, younger, the younger brother of Prince Gong, uh, also younger brother of the uh, Empress uh, Xianfeng, uh, Chun Qinghuang, then arrested Shu Shun as well. Executed them within, w w w within a period of days, and then had a new regime of Cixi and Cixan as the people of the ultimate authority with Prince Gong as the Yi Zhang Wang, which is the advisor, the advisor king, advisor prince to the government. And so now we are in a new era where it's, it's, it's a very interesting um, equilibrium of power. See, it is interesting. If, if the top guy wants to go disequilibrium to the power, the, the power forces will force it back to equilibrium. So if you think about the Qing dynasty, the equilibrium is emperor, close family, ruling. If the emperor is too young, then you would have the mother, the, and the, like the, the, the mother, the grandmother, and then the, the close family, like Dorgon and uh, Shun Zhi. Shun Zhi. So in this case, if the emperor is young, the equilibrium is close family, mothers, and, and son, and em son emperor. And so when Xianfeng tried to put eight distant cousins, or, or a few distant cousins with a few like Han officials, that didn't put the power in equilibrium. And so the, 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 the automatic process then changes to go back to what is the safest for the regime, which is the close family, Prince Gong, Prince Chun, the two mothers, and the emperor. And what's interesting, from 1861 to 1894, is actually a, it's, it's actually a prosperous period of the late Qing, which we'll talk about next time and time after, after the Taiping Rebellion.